In this video we're going to look at floating and sinking. Now we've already had a look at density in a previous lesson and we can find the density of a liquid such as water by putting a measuring cylinder onto a set of scales, pressing zero and then filling the measuring cylinder with water. We can find the mass of the water and we can find the volume of the water by reading it off of the measuring cylinder and then we can calculate the density of that water uh, by using the calculation um, mass divided by volume. And doing that, we can um, find that the density of water is one. It's one gram per centimeter cubed. And if we have an object such as this polystyrene ball, this is something that we know is going to float. We know from experience of floats on water at the swimming pool that polystyrene floats. And that is because its density is less than one. So density less than one, object floats. Density greater than one, such as this rubber bung, and the object will sink, okay? And what we've got here is two Newton meters, okay? This one has a scale going from zero to 10, and this one has a scale going from zero to one, okay? This is a more sensitive, Newton meter. Now the first thing we need to do is line up this line with zero and you can see to do that I've had to pull this down a bit. So I've got this dial at the top which I can turn, I don't know if I'm turning it the right way, hopefully. Let's go the other way. We can get that to line up with the zero. If we don't have it lined up with the zero when we start, then we will get inaccurate readings. Okay, so we do this to make our equipment as accurate as possible. Now we can see it coming down. There it is. See that line on the zero. So it's now going to give us an accurate reading because it has been set to zero. Okay. And we'll start off with the polystyrene, and I put that onto the Newton meter, you can see it hanging there, and that is giving us a reading of 0 0.05 Newtons, okay? You can see that there. And then when I put that into the water, the force of the up thrust of the water pushing up on the object has meant that the Newton reading has gone to zero, which is what we would expect. But um, we've now got that water, it's floating there in the water, and the water has that upthrust up force that is equal to the weight of the object. And as we know, take it out of the water, the weight of the object is 0 0.05 Newtons. So the upthrust must be 0 0.05 Newtons because the forces are balanced, it's not um, sinking down into the water, it's stationary there. Let's have a look at our rubber bung. We might need to use the other Newton meter. We might be okay with this one. Let's have a look. This one seems to be fine. So here's our rubber bung and our reading here is 0 0.67 Newtons. Okay, 0 0.67 Newtons. Let's put that into the water. And you can see sunk right to the bottom. Um, and obviously now the string is slack. That reading on the Newton meter has gone back to zero. So if I hold it here in kind of suspended in the water, we've got that force of upthrust still, and it's taken the weight down to 0 0.2. Okay, so there is a force of upthrust. When we get into a swimming pool, we do feel lighter. Um, and we float, and here, even though this object sinks, we have actually got some force of upthrust making um, the weight of the object appear to be lighter, okay? And your teacher will talk about that more now in the lesson. Hope you found that useful, thank you.